Hi Pallavi, good morning. Yes, hi Rakesh, good morning. Yeah. So Pallavi, can you tell me what is constructor in Java? A uh, constructor uh, in Java is um, it is uh, basically has the same class name uh, and uh, it is basically used to create to initialize the objects uh, uh, and to give the um, uh, values to the fields in a class. Okay, so which are the different types of constructors that you are aware about? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, static constructor mm -hmm. and uh, a param uh, parameterized yeah. constructor. Correct, correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Non-parameterized -para uh, constructor. Right. So, see, there are, when, when you say constructor, so why do you need constructor? Okay, so what is constructor? So, constructor is nothing but uh, it's a block of code, you can say. It is uh, similar to the method itself, and it is called when an instance of the class is created. The name of the constructor would be same as the name of the class itself. Okay. And there are three types of constructors that we all are aware about. One is the default constructor. Yes. Second is the parameterized constructor. And third is the copy constructor. Okay. Yeah, what is default con constructor? So a constructor that has no parameters, it is known as default constructor. Okay. okay, it is it is invisible. Even if you don't uh, mention it explicitly, it would be there. Okay. okay. And when you define the constructor with some kind of parameters, you can pass one parameter, you can pass two parameters. So that is known as parameterized constructor. Yes. Right? So that's how it would be there. And yes, the copy constructor. Mm -hmm. So copy constructor is passed with the it, it, the mechanism of the copy constructor is that it will copy the data available from the past object to the newly created object. So it is copying the data. It is okay. passing the data okay. from one object to the newly created object, right? So that is the use of the copy constructor. So copy there are three types of constructors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Copy constructor, parameterized constructor, parameterized and default. default constructor. Okay. Okay, what do you know about string? Uh, string is a class in Java hmm. and uh, 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 it's uh, uh, basically it is uh, used, uh, it's a data type hmm. and uh, basically whenever we want to store a group of words or a group of characters, so to store them we use the make, uh, we make use of the string mm -hmm. data type. So, so which are the different ways that you can create the string? Uh, like uh, we can uh, use the string uh, uh, data type like string uh, uh, string mm -hmm. and we can give a, a variable name like string str is mm -hmm. equal to and then for example in curly brackets Pallavi mm -hmm. semicolon. So in this mm -hmm. way Pallavi string will get stored in the str Correct. Uh, variable. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. What is the use of final keyword in Java? A uh, final keyword is basically used. Uh, it it can be used to declare a variable as final, or it can be used to declare a method as final, mm -hmm. or it can be used to declare a class as final. So basically, whenever we want to keep the same value of the variable as uh, as a final value throughout mm -hmm. the project then we can declare the variable name as final and uh, when we want to prevent the class from overriding then we can use final uh, we can give the method a uh, name as uh, final mm -hmm. so, right. yeah. yeah yeah please please go ahead yeah, and uh, the method uh, we can declare the method as uh, final is when we don't want uh, to give a uh, different implementation of the method in the subclass so that time we can make use of the word final uh, okay. we can um, yeah you can use the keyword as final. final so final can be used with the variables to make them constants 
final can be used with the methods to prevent method override that you told it correctly final can be used with the classes as well to prevent inheritance, inheritance. okay okay, okay. now what is inheritance in java uh, inheritance is uh, java is it's mm. basically a object oriented principle mm. in which uh, the uh, child class is it inherits its properties from the parent class mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah so whatever uh, methods or whatever variables uh, subclass has to inherit from the parent class that time we make use of uh, the inherit word and basically it is used in java to uh, for reusing of the code inheritance like uh, for example when we create a uh, class a uh, mm. class a and in that class we declare a method uh, add and then class B extends class A. The uh, class B is a subclass and it is extending class A, which is a parent class. Mm. Then in class B, we can and we want to override the class A method, add mm. method, and we want to uh, give different parameters. So in this way, we are making use of, we are overriding the method and uh, we are uh, extending. We are basically extend keyword is used to inherit. Yes. So in this way, we achieve inheritance and we can make uh, the reusability of the code. Mm -hmm. So which are the different types of inheritance? Um, single inheritance, multi-level uh, multi inheritance, multiple inheritance, and uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Then you have hybrid inheritance. Yeah. yeah. Hybrid. Right. hybrid is that so single inheritance is when you have two classes so you have class a class b class b is extending class a that okay. is single inheritance when you say multi-level inheritance so you have uh, let's say class a you have class b and you have class c so class a is your base class class b is your intermediate class and yes. class c is your derived class so it is multi-level class so class b would be extending class a class c would be extending class b Okay. okay so that this is, is multi-level multi -level. Multi -level. yes yeah. in case of hierarchical inheritance what happens is you have uh, one class which is base class that is class a and you yeah. have class b class c class d all are extending class a mm. class a okay yeah yeah so class a will be serving as a base class and this class b mm -hmm. c and d would be serving as the derived classes okay, okay then you have a multiple inheritance which is not possible in java directly but using interface, interface you can, can you can use it yeah achieve it and in case of hybrid inheritance it is a mix of two or more types of inheritance okay right so that is the hybrid inheritance okay now you need to write a program for factorial in java let's say if i want to write if I want to achieve the factorial of a four number, so what okay. it would be four into three into two into one. Similarly, if you have to find the factorial of eight, so it would be okay. eight into seven into six into five into up to one. Okay. So okay. this is the program that you need to write in Java. So I am giving you screen sharing rights. Okay. You can share your screen and yes. you can write the program. Are you, are you can you please uh, share the screen uh, can you click on okay. that uh, share I screen button oh, oh sorry I yeah. thought no worries no worries okay. it's totally fine okay. yeah yeah can you maximize this uh, window uh, notepad mm. yeah.
Yeah, Rakesh, I think. Uh, yeah. This for you are done. Having some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, no worries. So you are having an issue with this for loop, but uh, can you explain what you are trying to achieve in this program? What is the logic you are trying to build? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, in the main method, I'm declaring the method, I'm calling the method and I'm mm. passing a number four uh, mm. for which I want to calculate the factorial. Mm -hmm. Then it will, uh, uh, yeah, then it will go to the method uh, factorial four uh, uh, in J is equal to four. Mm. Then finally, in the for loop, uh, I am first initially I am uh, assigning i is equal to 4 mm -hmm. checking the condition i is uh, greater than or equal to 4 and i minus minus and then I have declared a variable fact uh, so uh, yeah uh, integer fact uh, variable uh, as 1 mm -hmm. and uh, fact is equal to fact into i means initially right. initially what will happen 1 into 4 will be there mm -hmm. then again it will go to this for loop uh, i's value will become 3 then uh, the initial 4 value uh, yeah then uh, fact was initially 4 so mm -hmm. uh, 4 into 3 it will take then again uh, 4 3s are 12 then again it will go to the for loop and uh, i value 3 then 2 it will come become minus minus then uh, i will be uh, two and then yeah uh, but, then, yeah but this thing that you have written in the for loop i equal to j right so when i is equal to j so rather than that what you have to change here is just the small changes i equal to one you have to start from one itself see okay. let me show you the logic for this thing right. so Yeah, is my screen visible to you? Uh, you are... Not, yes, yes, not yes. visible? Okay, yeah. it's visible. Yeah, see, uh, what you have to do is, uh, we will be defining one simple class. Within that, we'll be defining public static void main. Take only two variables here, integer i and fact. You start the fact with one itself. Okay, okay. now in the for loop, what we are doing is, and this is the number, let's say you have to find the factorial of a five or four. So this okay. is the number that you will be defining for whom you have to find the factorial. Mm -hmm. Then the for loop itself in this i equal to one. So we are starting from one onwards. We are okay. going to the loop till we get to that number. So it's okay. the same thing. Either you go five, four, three, two, one, or you go one, two, three, four, five. Multiplication okay. in this order or in that order it would be the same and i plus plus so it is just that instead of i equal to j you have to correct it to i equal to one. five or i equal to one right okay. whichever side you want to go and mm -hmm. then this multiplication thing i think this thing you already covered and then the s system dot out dot print and okay okay mm -hmm. simple fine okay. now uh Hmm. What is static keyword in Java? Uh, static keyword in Java is basically used to assign a static. Uh, I mean, it is uh, used for uh, whenever we are, uh, for example, whenever we are uh, declaring a variable as static. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we don't need to. Uh... So, whenever you define the static keyword in Java, it is used to create class level variables and methods. You don't need to create an object, you don't need to create an instance of the okay. class to access them. It can be accessed without creating an instance of the class. Okay. okay right so that is the static keyword it can be applied to state uh, variable it can be applied to method as well okay. right okay. so static variable is a variable that will be shared among all the instances of the class it is also known as a class variable okay okay right then okay. static method is also there that will be belonging to the class rather than the instance of the class okay. now can we override a static method in java uh, yes are you sure Uh, 
I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video. Can we override the static method in Java? You can put your answers in the comment section of the video. Okay. Now, okay, see, I'll give you the answer. The, the static method cannot be overridden. Why? Because the static methods are the ones, those are resolved at the compile time. Okay. So you are aware about compile time polymorphism, runtime polymorphism. Yes, I yes. think on other day we were discussing about method overloading, method overriding. So mm -hmm. this is again the use case of the compile time. Okay. Right. So th those are resolved at the compile time. Hence you cannot okay. override these particular things. Okay. Okay. What are the advantages of using static methods and variables? Advantages. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that uh, we don't need to create the object of uh, the class again and again. Yes, correct. So for avoiding the, uh, and the memory will get, uh, to avoid the memory, uh, save the memory. Yes. Uh, so that might be the case. Correct. We can make use of static. Yes, yes. So memory wise efficiency is achieved. So static variables are saving memory. Okay. Because they will be shared among all the instances of the class. Okay. Right. Then uh, access without creating an object. So you don't need to create the objects as well. Okay. It can be uh, accessed without objects. Right. So that is the advantage of the static methods, static variables. Okay. Can a constructor be static in Java? Uh, yes, but I don't know the reason. Mm -hmm. I had read it somewhere that. Uh, mm -hmm can keep the constructor as static. Okay, see, what are constructors? So constructor is a called whenever an object is created. Okay. You will be calling the constructor of that particular class at the same moment, whenever you create an object. Mm -hmm. In case of static, it is something that is opposite to creation of the objects. Okay. Right. Okay. So constructor cannot be static. Okay. Because constructors are used to actually initialize objects, objects and yes. static methods, they belong to the class level. So both are okay. moving in the different direction. Different direction. Mm -hmm. So we cannot. Okay. Yes, yes. Now, can we declare a static method in an interface in Java? Static method. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, we can. Yes, I suppose we can. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, perfect answer. Yes. 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 So yes. starting from Java 8 version, you can declare static methods and static interfaces. Methods. Okay. Fine, great. Okay, what is the difference between string buffer and string builder? String buffer is a class mm -hmm. which has. Oh no, sorry, I haven't uh, gone through these topics. No worries, no worries. Okay, so now let me. Okay, now you have to write a program. So you have to take a string, okay. any, any string you can take, you can take your name in the string and you have to write a program to remove the duplicate characters from that particular string. Okay. To remove the duplicate, the duplicate characters. characters. Let's say your name is Pallavi. So A is coming uh, multiple times, duplicate. L okay. is coming multiple times. So okay. that that's duplicate things you have to remove. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we can make use of hash map, right? Yes, you can make. So there are multiple ways you can use a, a simple for loop. You can use uh, hashing. You can use sorting algorithm. You can use index of method. Okay. Whichever way you are, you are comfortable. Okay. I'll uh, try using hash map. Yeah, yeah, no worries.
Yeah. Can you share the screen? Yes, yes. Sorry. No worries, no worries. Are you able to? Yeah, see yeah. Now, Victoria. Yeah, it's visible.
Yeah, Rakesh, actually I'm having some yeah. problem over here. Okay. So, so what have you done here? So can you explain the logic? Uh, yes, Rakesh, actually in the main method, I have declared a map and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I, I've created a, a, a object of hash map mm -hmm. and then I have uh, declared a string. Uh, Pallavi. Now I want to remove the duplicate characters like A and L. Mm. So uh, first of all, I will convert this string into an array of uh, uh, into uh, array of characters. Mm. Uh, so uh, with the use of uh, dot to uh, dot, uh, str dot to char array, it will get converted into characters one by one, and it will get stored into this char array one uh, array. Then uh, I have uh, used the for loop for mm -hmm. uh, traversing the array mm -hmm. of characters. Then first of all, it will uh, using this for each loop. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, ch value will be uh, p. Mm -hmm. So it will then check if this uh, map mm -hmm. uh, uh, instance uh, if this it has the contains key that means uh, contains key method is uh, uh, yeah i mean it checks whether character p is present or not mm -hmm. in the character and uh, if it is true then what it will do it will fetch the next character and it will put uh, yeah so till fetching, I'm able to do mm -hmm. it, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not able to get like how I can remove mm -hmm. the character. The, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you are able to fetch. Fine. So you are using hash map. So within the for loop, you can give one more if condition. If that particular. So what is hash map? It mm -hmm. contains key value pair. Yes. So. Within that, you can check if that particular map does not contain key. If it contains or not contains. So that kind of if condition mm -hmm. you can put. Okay. And then you can append that particular result. Because if it contains, then you have to exclude that okay. particular element. Okay. And you have to proceed with the next thing. So let me show you one program. This is... uh, see, using hash map, uh, this is the logic. Uh, screen is visible to you? Yes, yes. So whatever things you have done till here, the same thing. It is just that the string I have taken a different and uh, system dot out dot print ln is original string and after string. And here is your main core logic. Hash map you are defining equal to new hash map. What we are going is we are going with a character and its Boolean value. Yes, yes. So we are, tr we are converting the string to the char array. Then we are traversing for loop. So the same for loop, but it is just the advanced for loop that I have taken. Okay. And we are going for this particular condition if it contains key or does not contain key. Okay. So accordingly, it would be taken care. Now, this is one of the approach. So when you go for hash map in an interview, they'll tell you, yes, the, this is the one of the way. Now, they might also ask you if it is possible via any other uh, collection. So in that case, what you can do is you can also show them this kind of example okay. using linked hash set. Okay. Okay. So the same thing is done using linked hash set, and we are what what we we are doing here is uh, you can see this linked hash set. We are defining this, and we are adding each character of the string to the linked hash set. So you will be traversing through the for loop, and that for loop will be traversing up to str dot length. So you will be traversing with respect to the length of that string. Okay. And that you'll be printing. Sorry, you'll be adding that particular character in that string one by one. Okay. Within that, you'll be going for a for loop. Okay. And then you can remove the duplicates. So this is the method that you will be calling it later. Or you can also go for hash map that we saw. Right. So these are two ways how you can achieve this particular program. But I think 50, 60 percent, uh, it was good. You were able to build that logic you were able to come up with that approach so that was a good thing okay pallavi i am done with the interview do you have any questions for me uh, yes rakesh just mm -hmm. like i mean yeah. 
what about the progress i mean sure and yeah. i know i was not that uh, the same uh -huh. no worries so see programs is something that slowly and gradually you would reach to that level right so maybe today you are 60 percent there tomorrow you'll be 70 percent after some time you'll be 80 percent 90 percent and after some time you will be having those kind of approaches in your mind that we discussed before starting this program mm -hmm. like you can go for index off you can go for hashing mechanism okay. so those things are something that would come eventually with the time so don't worry rest okay. all was good you were able to answer static related interview questions answers you're able to answer inheritance mm -hmm. um, before inheritance we started with i think uh, constructor yes. so you were able to answer that right so okay. it was good okay. Okay. okay so hashing uh just one more question 